In this video, we're gonna catch up with the latest moves uh, in the US stock market indices and a quick look at the NASDAQ 100 index that hit fresh all-time highs this week. Hello, I'm David Jones. This is uh, the weekly look at stock market indices that I do with Capital.com. It's been quite a big week. Um, first of all, we've seen the NASDAQ hit fresh all-time highs, so the tech-biased index in the USA hitting levels that we haven't seen before. Plus also the S&P 500, the broader US stock market index that we're going to focus on first of all, uh, that's at its best levels since early February when we saw that, that big sell-off for global stock markets. Um, it's US earnings season, plenty of US companies reporting results. Uh, still this week we've got eBay and Microsoft to come to name but two. We had Netflix earlier in the week. Uh, their results initially were disappointing but we have seen strong bounce back uh, by the shares on Tuesday in US trading after opening lower. They, they powered higher and recovered a big chunk uh, of those losses. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the S&P. It's moved above 2800 this week, uh, back to what levels we haven't been at for nearly, well, just over five months now. So, so what does this mean? Uh, is it time to go short or does it look as if there are going to be further gains to come? Let's take a look at the chart. So here's the uh, big picture view for the, the broader US stock market, the S&P 500. It's been something of a momentous week. We've seen it move back to levels that we haven't been at since February. So back here, let's just zoom this in a little bit. We saw stock markets fall off a cliff really, end of Jan uh, into Feb, the most volatile they'd been for quite some time. And since then, we've had just something of a consolidation move in these markets, not really going anywhere, struggling to hold on to any sort of strength. But over the last week, we've seen these old highs from back in March, just above 2800 break. So I think it's going to be a really interesting finish to the rest of the week, particularly, of course, considering we also have more earnings from US companies uh, to come out. Can it hold on to this strength above 2800? If it does, the next target is for a run back to these old highs, the all time highs from January up around about 2880. You could say in the short term, it's looking a bit overheated, uh, the RSI, not quite overbought on the RSI, but when we've been up here before, these sort of levels on the RSI, this is a 14 day RSI, the market has run out of steam. So we could have a correction. But we've got plenty of support. We've got the, the, the trend line coming up now for three months, coming in about 26.90. The lows from the end of June, same sort of area, 26.90, 2700. So at the moment, you know, from a charting point of view, chartists would view any weakness um, as just a retracement of this trend before the market pushes higher. But the breakthrough 2800 is a big one. So it's a really interesting market to watch to see if we can hit those all time highs. Uh, through the rest of the summer. So I think this is a really interesting move. You know, since that big sell-off uh, in early Feb, we have seen these markets somewhat trapped, but, but this is a breakout. It's the early stages of a breakout. And I think the question for the rest of the week is, can it hold on to these gains uh, above 2,800? But that, that trend off those lows, still very much in place. I'd mentioned at the beginning uh, that the NASDAQ, that the more tech-biased um, index had hit fresh all-time highs. So let's, uh, let's take a quick look at that and see how it has outperformed the broader market uh, in recent months. Let's have a quick look at the, uh, the, the tech biased index, the NASDAQ 100. You can see up here top left in the platform, it's the US 100. So I've picked up really on the move over the last couple of years. It's a clear trend in place. The market did fall off a cliff in January following other markets lower, but actually set fresh all time highs in March, just demonstrating the strength of these technology stocks. You know, much has been made uh, about how the likes of the, the, the FANG stocks have, have led the market higher. And that's definitely been the case. And just this week, we've seen it push out again to fresh all-time highs. So plenty of momentum behind this market, like the S&P, because we have these big trends in place. Any weakness looks like a buying opportunity. But in the short term, you could argue it's a bit overcooked. We've got, let me just zoom in. So we've got the highs hit up here in June. Market sells off to 7,000, rallies up to 7,400. But we do have a bit of bearish divergence on the RSI where the market's poked higher, higher still, but the RSI hasn't followed through. So, so there's an argument that maybe it's a little bit overheated. But as we've seen all the way over the last couple of years and more, 
uh, any weakness doesn't last long. So I think it's another one to watch over the next the next few days, but clearly a market with plenty of momentum behind it at the moment. So despite the various uh, political rumblings around the world, US stock markets shrugging this off and continuing uh, to move higher. Let's see how they perform over the rest of the week. We'll start wrapping things up there as usual. Any questions or comments, leave us a message in the comments down below. If you like the video, please click on the thumbs up. Uh, it definitely helps us re reaching uh, a wider audience. And every Wednesday, at 12.30, uh, I run a, a live update. So 12.30 UK time, we do a live update on various markets, FX, cryptocurrencies, indices, gold and oil, direct from the YouTube channel. So to never miss out, and to never miss out on the, the other topics uh, that we cover in videos, just make sure you're subscribed by clicking on the subscribe button and uh, click on the notification icon. You get automatically notified every time we upload a new video. But for this week, for stock market indices, uh, we'll leave it there. So from me, David Jones and Capital.com, I hope you have a good trading week.